Well, uh, pleasure to meet you, my friend. Great to meet you. Hey, thanks for taking a minute out. And before we get into your new singles and your new work, what I would like to do is cover COVID. The last three years did quite a thing on all the musicians. How did oh, you survive? How did you survive it? And how are you doing now? Well, well, the thing is, um, you know, we actually during COVID, we, you know, I kind of did what everybody else did. You know, we stayed at home um, and we just, you know, entertainers were kind of twiddling the thumbs. We didn't know what to do. And um, of course, you know, and then during that, I said, you know what? I said to my wife, we can actually do something. We can prepare and um, kind of, and, and we got lucky enough that we uh, got in touch with my producer now, Sal Oliveri, who put this wonderful team around me um, during COVID. Um, and, you know, we flew out to LA um, and, and we made it happen and we, and we recorded these songs and um, by the grace of God, we actually managed to do it. So, but um, to answer your question, what we did, me and my wife, we were kind of at a loose end. She was a hairdresser, so we made a salon from home. Um, so she was like, everybody wanted their hair cut. Um, but me, myself, I obviously, I couldn't work. There was no one to perform to. Um, I was, um, you know, I just had nowhere to perform. So it's a crazy time, as you said. Absolutely, yeah. So talk to me about the new singles, the new work that you have put out. How, how what, what went into this and how does it feel? Well, what went into this? Um, good question. Um, well, I actually sent, um, during the COVID time, or it was just before COVID, I sent actually a very small voice note to my now producer, Sal Oliveri. And he said, you know what? I think this guy's got a little something. So um, he said, you know, do you want to record songs? So we actually searched a long time for some songs. And uh, we came across three really good songs that was um, written by, two were written by Roger Brown and Byron Hill. Um, we're both actually in the well Byron's in the songwriters Nashville Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame Roger Brown had written for people like Barbara Streisand and diverse acts like Tammy Wynette and many more and um, they wrote two of the songs one's called um, of course the first single My Lucky Stars and our which is going to be our third release will be I Bet You Weren't Expecting This this new single it was written by Kathy Lee Gifford and Brett James um, so very pleased to get that single out and it's doing great. So um, very, very lucky in that sense. So where were you born and raised? How did this jazz and singing world begin for you? Well, that that was that's a good question, too. That was my grandfather. So my grandfather would sing. We're actually from Manchester in the UK and he would sing around the house and then we'd have Christmas parties. So they'd stand me on a kind of stool when I was about six years of age and I'd sing a bad version of the uh, Pavarotti song Ness and Dorma and I'd make my own words up and that's how the whole thing began listening to my grandfather in the house um, singing a lot of Tony Bennett and uh, Sinatra Tony who's just tragically passed away but you know uh, he had a great life and he left a legacy didn't he so um yeah so that's how the whole thing started started doing pubs the UK pubs around Manchester and Liverpool where the Beatles came from and um, that's how it all kind of began and progressed and um, then I started working on in casinos and and so on, it just went from that. My dad was full-blooded Italian, so when I came home and I heard Pavarotti, yeah. I knew something happened. I was like, uh-oh, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, yeah. But, um, you know, so, but that's, I mean, the first, the crazy thing was the first singing coach that my mom and dad actually took me to, um, she actually wanted me to go operatic, but I never did go, I didn't want to go op operatic. I wanted to be a, you know, I was young then, and I wanted to be kind of a, a pop star. So as you do at that age, right? So yeah. we did all that. And um, but it was great. You know, the great thing about being taught by kind of a, an opera teacher was breathing technique um, and and the jazz music and swing music kind of calls for that. I mean, I know Sinatra would use his voice like a trumpet from Tommy Dorsey. Um, but, you know, it was a great lesson to how to use your breath correctly and also phrasing and that type of thing, you know. What was the first live show you ever saw that blew you away that either made you think, man, I'd love to hop up on stage one day or I'm hooked? You know, the great, it was probably, um, it was probably watching somebody, you know, my grandfather was my first musical influence, but probably the first time I heard kind of like Sinatra do The Lady is a Tramp and I watched him for the first time with my grandfather. I think he was doing a gig at the Royal Albert Hall and I think I was, um, you know, I was, I was, you know, I, was, I wasn't even born, but he'd show me all these old videos. So we'd sit there late in the evening um, after we came back from the pub 
Um, and me and my grandmother and my grandfather would sit and listen to, uh, you know, and watch the live Royal Albert Hall um, show. I mean, and that kind of gave me the buzz of it, um, that I wanted to do this style of music. And um, I guess you're either, you know, being Italian, uh, like yourself, you know, you probably love this style of music, you know. So it was it's just becoming my blood. And, and, and that's that's where I am. You know, this is what made me perform this type of music. So all of these aspects that go into who you are as a professional musician, from recording to promoting yeah. to live shows, there's a lot that goes into it. But what do you like the most? What do you look forward to the most about being a professional musician? I think actually it's the joy that you give people. Um, I'd have to say when you're performing, you know, you see some of the faces and, and it's kind of, you take them away. If you do a 45 minute performance, you know, whatever troubles they have in life at that particular point, it kind of takes them away. And, and that you can see if you do a good song or you do it well done, it kind of takes them away for that 45 minutes to an hour show that they paid for or whatever. Um, they might be having a meal or whatever, but it takes them away. And um, I think music is a great, great thing. It's good for the soul. And um, it's good for people. It makes you feel good. It certainly helped me, you know, during lockdown. Listen, you know, I've felt a little bit down. Not that I feel down often, but um, you know, d definitely at that point there was there was moments where I listened to a Sinatra song or um, so. So you know, music music is good for that. I think. So why do you love jazz? Jazz. I think it just all comes back to my to my again. I keep mentioning my grandfather, but it just just him singing around the house and. Um, I would kind of imitate him. I would kind of do a bad version because I couldn't sing anything at like, you know, um, six years of age. My grandfather was actually quite a good singer. Even though he wasn't professional, he would compare, he would run a social club in England. So he would compare and um, he would, he would like, you know, the entertainers, he would sing a song before and then he would invite them up to the stage to do their show. So my grandfather was a really good singer. Uh, he had a great life, died at 91. So, um, you know, I'll take that any day. But um, yeah, I think I think that's what got me. This is what got me the love for jazz music, and of course, um, jazz swing. So it's almost crossed over. Uh, I'm almost in the middle of swing and jazz, really. Um, not not an out and out jazzer, I would say, but um, but definitely in that pocket of swing jazz for sure. So let's say we get off the phone and a jazz time machine or a DeLorean pulls up, and you can go anywhere in time and see anybody perform. Where are you going? Who are you going to see? Got to be the Royal Albert Hall or somewhere like Caesar's Palace in the old days, watching um, the Rat Pack, you man. know, the the Peter Lawf. I mean, they, them guys had such a great life, man. I mean, they. I mean, it, it, you know, I, I know a lot of people were envious of them, but it, but it's funny. I read an article recently about um, D. Martin, and even though he had the gimmick about him drinking all the time, he would send his manager back for apple juice <laughs> that looked like whiskey, right, or bourbon, and he would come out and he would do that. So you know, a lot of it was gimmick. But um, I, I don't think Sinatra was. I think, you know, Dean went to bed like a good boy. He wasn't really a party guy with his wife. And and Peter Lawford and Frank Sinatra and, the, and um, Sammy Davis went out to party. So I think that was the way it was, you know. Yeah, I join you on that trip for sure. Um, so everyone out there has a perception of you, your family, your friends, your fans. But ultimately, you're in control. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? I think I'm kind of a guy that's come from kind of a normal background. Unfortunately, my mom passed away a few years ago to cancer. My dad passed away when I was very, very young. Uh, when I say very young, 24, which is still very young, isn't it? Um, and I would say that I'm a quite, I've always been genuine. I think when I've gone out onto the stage, I've always, you know, an audience will know. An audience will know as soon as you go out on stage, whether you're, you're portraying a genuine character or you're not. And I've always had them on my side. And, um, and I think this is why, the music is being taken. I mean, it's good music. I think I do an okay job at the music that we do. Um, and, you know, I think that that's, that's me. I'm a genuine guy, um, kind of wanting to make people happy through my music. Wonderful. So if anyone out there, I guess my, my final question about your new singles, what are you hoping the listener gets sure. from this music? I want, I want the listener to kind of take... Um, take a good feeling from it you know because this this last uh, song then came you the, the latest release is all about somebody that's kind of been looking for love all the life frustrated you know they've not seen maybe another couple that have been in love since since very young and um and then it hits them it just hits them that certain person comes into the life and they go hey here he is here she is 
and and that was uh and that's it and that's what i kind of want them to 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 realize through this record that people out there that are single or you know struggling either for mental health or whatever um that you know this kind of hits on that there's always somebody for somebody um and and that's the point the message i want to get across with this um my new single thank you Mew. So the cherry on top probably for a recording artist is to get out and to perform this live. What live shows, what's going on with you coming up? The live shows are in um, being in progress actually now. My manager, who I have to give a mention, and I have a wonderful team. I'm not going to mention them all, but I would like to mention my manager, Cynthia Hurst, and um, from American International Artists. Thank you so much to Cynthia. She, uh, We could have not done this, or I could have not done this without her. She's been um, a rock and she's been absolutely wonderful, along with my wonderful wife, Carly Hughes, who's here right now next to me on the camera. She says, hey. Um, hey. But um, yeah, I mean, and, and all the wonderful team from, um, you know, I'm not going to, I mean, I guess I can give a mention. Sal Oliveri is my producer, produces paint. Chris Stapleton, he's worked with lots of people. Um, of course, Bill Schnee, who did all the engineering. Cody McVeigh, who did a wonderful job with the arrangements. Um, James McGettrick, who was my videographer, Betts Wilson, South, lovely South African lady who did all my photography and everything at Capitol Records. Um, who have I missed? Um, Sarah, of course, at uh, the wonderful marketing company. And we have um, we have Max, Max at Crossover Media. So, you know, if I missed anybody, I'm sorry, but thank you to all you wonderful people um, for, for helping me with this. I do appreciate you. Yeah, there's no Oscars music. We're not cutting you off. You're fine. <laughs> I know, right? I know. Yeah. Dim, 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 dim. I don't know. My friends said actually, oh, you're not even won anything yet. And you're like, you got all this team. But, you know, it takes so many people. And, you know, we had, I mean, I'll give you an example. We had over 35 musicians working on this for three, the three songs, the EP. So, uh, which we're going to obviously progress to the album. Um, but, you know, you know, people listen to a song, I think, for three minutes. Um, and that's why I want to explain on here that, it takes about 35 musicians per song um, to make one record. So, um, and I don't know how we did it, to be honest with you, during, during COVID, but somehow we did it. But um, I'm grateful to all my music fans. Um, and again, you know, that we're still building that. And people are sending me some lovely messages from around the world. And, um, and, and the likes of people like yourself, thank you so much for having me on. And that, that really helps me out with getting my music out there and getting new fans and new subscribers. I really appreciate you. Absolutely. Well, you know, it's like the end of a movie where they have all the credits. It takes like 10 minutes to get through all those names. You're like, oh my God. No, right. That's why there was a, put them all like, yeah, yeah. 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 But there was a gaffer for the gaffer. There was a drink guy for the drink guy, you know, so. Yeah, absolutely. Crazy. But that's what it takes, man. It means like, yeah. you know, I think um, an old record producer friend of mine, we're going to see his wife. He's, he's passed away now. But he was telling me and my wife how Elton John used to be his T-boy at uh, Mills Music. Oh, which wow. was a, a big publishing music company years ago. Wow. And um, you know, and then he went on to record United with Stan, which Tony wrote. Um, and um, yeah, so very he told me a few interesting stories. But um, yeah. That's wonderful. So if anyone wants to pick up the music, learn more about you, anything pertaining to your world, finding out about live shows, where do they go? Yes, it'll be uh Paul Hughes Music um dot com and then it'll also be my instagram is paul hughes official um so if you want to actually we had a i'm actually knocked out and i have to mention this that you know we did a promotional reel on instagram um it was about a 40 second um reel for the new single and we've currently i think we've had 225,000 views on it which in three and a half days which none of us even knew that we have that many views so thank you to everybody that viewed that and um for thanking you and uh, we hope we hope to, we can hit half a million with it, so that'll be wonderful if we can do that. Wonderful. Hey, this has been great, Paul. Thank you so much for opening up. Thanks for your time. Best of luck with the music and everything. Thank it's you so fun. much. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you, and have a wonderful day. So please go and get the music, guys. Go and support Ben Can You. And I love this channel, by the way. We have it on Don't We a lot, and we love the music that it plays. And um, God bless you all, and uh, thank you for having me on again. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. And before.